Good morning, it's me, Calvin K from Quack Talk. You are watching the business show by Quack TV because why watch Quack TV where you can watch Quack TV? And I've started saying that again because people was wondering why I don't say it anymore. And before I bring on today's guest, remember if you are watching this live, please jump in the comments and say good morning to me. And if you are watching this on replay, please put hashtag replay in the comments because I like to know who stalks me. I do. I'm intrigued. What's, what's going on here? What's this? What's this? Look at that. Honestly, professional to the bitter end, people. So yes, hope we are all well. I've got some big news. It's personal news. I don't care. I'm not. Even, I'm not even sorry. I've got an apartment, and I'm moving tomorrow. <laughs> Yay me! So yes, first of all, the but you know, first of all, thank you everyone for watching the shows and things like that. It's also thanks to this that this is now doable. But yes, I've now got an apartment. I'm becoming a big boy. I'm becoming a big boy. I'm getting my own place. So yes, I cannot wait, and that means I will officially have Quack Towers where I'll be doing all this stuff from. So I will have Quack Towers, and it's going to be great. It's going to be absolutely bloody fabulous. So yes, like I said, if you are watching live, please jump in the comments and say good morning to me. And if you are watching on replay, jump on and put hashtag replay. So today's guest will be bringing on very, very shortly. We are going to be talking about planning for the future that you want, which is so important. Like, it's such an important thing, because planning for the future you want, for me, obviously, this is financially, but for me, it's also to do with, you know, mentality, you know, mantras, if you've got any affirmations, I'm a big believer in make space for what you want. So for example, I've wanted a lovely city centre apartment for a good two years now, a really good two years. So I started buying things for a lovely city centre, two bedroom apartment. I know it sounds daft, but even like high quality cutlery, nice plates. I've even got a lecrae set jug, like mixing bowl jug, that's massive, right? And it should be, it was like 45 quid, I think. I, bought, and I've just started, I know people call it bottom shelving, but I was preparing for this nice apartment. I wanted it. And it's very similar. Um, I got this kind of mentality from Steve Harvey, an American show host and comedian, bit controversial. But he said when he was wanting a car, when he was growing up and stuff, when he was the right age because he had no money, he had this rundown car on his driveway where it had no wheels, it was on top of bricks, there was leaves and everything in it. He was like, oh, mom, I'm going to go get a new car. I'm going to get a new car in the next couple of weeks. She went, okay, don't forget you've got one on the driveway. And what she ended up teaching him was, you're bringing a new car, but you've got nowhere to put it. So then you're going to leave it on the road. And then what could happen to it if it's on the road? People could crash into it. Things like that. You're not preparing for this thing you want because you've got the old crap and everything you don't want still here. You need to get rid of it. You need to tidy it up. And what he did is he cleaned the driveway. He cleaned the car. He got rid of it. He sorted for parts. He had a bit of extra money. He cleaned the spray. He got rid of the oil on it and everything like that. And with that, instead of two weeks, he got the car in two days because his mentality was then focused on the car. And that's what I'm a big believer in. So there you go. So today, I'm about to bring on my guest where we are going to be talking about planning for your future. I do believe it's more financially, but we can probably talk about a couple of things that I've probably just mentioned as well, to be honest, because we'll talk a lot of trap anyway. So today's guest is Laura Shufflebertham, who I'll bring on very in a moment. She is a mum. She's a financial planner. She is a wonderful, wonderful lady. So with no further ado, good morning, Laura. Hi, good morning. Did you like my little build-up there? Did you like my little build-up? Oh, lovely. Laura, how are you? How are you How are you this morning? You well? Good, good. I, I do try and hold off on my cost of purchase until Friday, but it got it today on a Wednesday. I might even go again on Friday, but never mind. Okay. Why not? Why not? You only live once. Laura, can you just tell us who you are and what you do, please, before we carry on? So uh, I'm a financial planner. I work with uh, clients to plan and protect their financial future. I work a lot with mm -hmm. parents and business. I'm also mum to Oliver and Emily. That you might be able to see on the, the pictures behind me. So Emily's seven and Oliver is nearly 11 going on 18. Uh, I live up in the Rosendale Valley uh, in Lancashire. And I started my business about 18 months ago uh, as a self-employed financial advisor. So uh, still quite early on in the, in the business journey. Oh, oh, I love that. I absolutely love that. So firstly, 18 months ago, I swear there was something going on in the world around 18 months ago, you know, may maybe just a bit after you started, but okay, that's a good time to choose to, what made you choose to do it then? Was was it, the, was COVID around then? No, so it was August 2019 that I went to self-employed. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, so there's a few factors in it um moving house i wanted to move house before i went self-employed so i'd already moved house yeah. i wanted um to be a financial advisor and i was working in a practice 
um, but the opportunity wasn't there to, to go through the advice process and sit the, the the wealth diploma that I did last year. So I decided to just go out and do it um, on my own uh, with the support of the Open Work Academy. So Open Work's my network uh, that I work with uh, for all my funds and insurers. Wow. And so I've got a lot of support behind me, which is really good uh, being self-employed. You've got that in the background, really. So what did you do before financial planning? Have you always worked in finances or what did you do before that? I have. I started working in an insurance office as an office junior when I was 16. Um, that was part of the CIS, so the Cooperative uh, Insurance uh, Society. I stayed yep. within the co-op group for 16 years, uh, working in the banking side of it, um, in the commercial banking side of it towards the end, uh, when it made redundant, when they downsized the uh, commercial banking team. So this was always part of the plan uh, when I got made redundant to go down the financial advice route. I had to wait till my youngest was out of nursery. Nursery's not cheap. And um, I had that that space really to, to, to move it forward. So I had about a three year sort of working in a practice, getting to know this industry really and thinking, is this what yeah. I really want before I invest all that time in, in study and, and you know, jump on, on that self-employed train? Um, so it was just to make sure that it was the right choice. And I absolutely love it. So it was definitely the right choice. Are you very passionate about it? Obviously, me and you know each other a bit more personally than just a guest coming on the show. We do networking together, so on and so on and so on. So, yeah, it's you know, it's really important. And I know how passionate you are about what you do. Do you think having children is an impact on that? Because you know the benefits of what you do. Yeah, I do think it's a factor. And I think um, that's probably why a lot of my clients that I attract are also parents. Yeah. Um, and it's very relatable um around the protection side so part of your financial planning your protections your foundation really so that's making sure if things happen like it was poorly if you was critically yeah. ill if you couldn't work if you passed away to make sure that everything in your life including your children are financially protected and i think it's good um i've got all my protection in place and what i do with new clients is i'll go through what planning i've done so it's very yeah. relatable because i can say well this is what i've got in place and this is how much it's cost to me and that gives them a very good example of there or thereabouts you know what they'd be looking at so yeah. it makes it more relatable so planning for future obviously you help people plan for their future and then we're going to come back to the kids so why is it so important i know it sounds a bit of a stupid question but why is it so important planning for our future but if i base it on your clients because i take it planning our future is going to benefit our children's future so yeah. go on talk me through it what why is that so important planning our future for the kids future like so a lot of people go, oh, yeah, you know, ISAs, it's locked away. I'm not going to make great interest. I'm not going to do all this. My pen, I've got a pension. I've got a state pension. Why do I need to worry? You know, you've got all this kind of stuff. Why is it important to plan for our own future, for them to benefit our children's or leftover relatives? Yeah, it's, it's important to plan uh, to have that financial security. And a lot of people will think, oh, I'm, not, I'm not old enough to do those, like, adult-type tasks of, like, yeah. you know, saving and doing a pension and... You know, sorting out some life insurance. Um, but once it's done, it's done. And the, the thing with having an advisor is you've got that ongoing service. So when when clients do have children and there's that intergenerational planning, so like pa passing your pensions on. So if you don't spend all your money in retirement, you can pass it down through the generations. Yeah. And ISAs do um, give give quite a decent return if, if they're invested. So if they're in, if they're in cash, yeah. you're not going to get much, much from them. But if they're invested... Uh, in sort of stocks and shares and, and a portfolio then you know there has still been uh, good returns over the last the last year really it's all about diversifying your risks so you're not putting all your eggs in one basket which is what I go through with all my clients um, planning for kids is important as well so you can do a pension from birth which not a lot yeah. of parents know about uh, putting your new junior ISA subscription in if you've got the cash flow to do it obviously um, but it's about working with the client as as their wealth grows the planning will, will go in line with that and what they want for the future. See, I think, so I come from, mum, if you're watching this, don't be offended because I hope I ain't got it wrong. Uh, I think I, be, I come from upper working class. You know, I do, I do come from upper working class. I've had very hard working parents. We've never been given anything in life. You know, we don't come from money or anything of any sort. We don't. And I think stuff like this, sometimes for people that maybe come from, I'm going to use the word disadvantaged. Disadvantaged background sometimes won't believe that they can get all this stuff, but they can, can they? Everyone to an extent could afford financial planning, investment, because it goes off what you've got, doesn't it? 
yeah definitely i mean i fundamentally believe that every everybody needs financial advice it doesn't matter yeah. what you earn it doesn't matter where you work it doesn't matter if you're a parent or if you're not there'll be some level of advice that's relevant to you and i think that is a misconception when especially when people go around going i'm looking for high net worth clients um i'm looking for people that are ready to discuss the future and plan for it yeah and part of that is a budgeting exercise. So I go through budgeting exercise on my clients, look at what, what their incomes and outgoings are. And I've had people that have done that and gone, you know what, Laura, I've gone through my bank statements to fill in this spreadsheet for you. And I didn't realise I was still paying £20 a month in pet insurance since she died like months ago. Do you know what I mean? Because people don't look at the bank account, bank statements. So honestly, it's like, like got on a tangent. I looked, I looked about three, maybe four weeks ago. I didn't realise I've been paying Now TV for 18 months. Didn't even realise. I'd like it was one of them. I was like, oh, I've not updated it in a while. So I, I like just looking for everything. I was like, why have I been paying now TV for 18? Why didn't I pick that up the last time I checked this spreadsheet? Like, yeah. eh? but it's basically because they give me like six months for free. So it wasn't there when I was last doing it. It's there now. Like, <laughs> I was like, oh shit. <laughs> so yeah, no, I know exactly what you mean, check it up. But yeah, it's so important, isn't it? And the, you know, these high net worth clients, some of the best clients you can ever get. And even coming from a coaching point of view, are your people that want to be high net worth? They're not, but they want yeah. to get there, you know, and that's the help that they're needing. They want to get to high net worth and they're the ones that need the help. The people that are high net worth, most of the time, they might have done something right to get to a high net worth, you know, is the people that want to get there that I personally, a bit like yourself, are saying, I'd love to help them people. You know, they're the people that I'm like, I'd love to help you. Absolutely fine. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's about being there at the start of someone's journey. So like I'm, I'm working with a couple at the minute. I've done some pension work with the parents. So they've referred me to their daughter and son-in-law, which is how the business works, really. It's very referral-based. So now I'm sorting out some life insurance for them because they've got two children. They've not bought a house yet. But he's a self-employed joiner. He's only 29. And he's like, oh. what I could do with setting up a pension? So he's just doing £100 a month into a pension. It's just a starting point for him. He gets tax relief on top of that. And he'll get used to paying it out. And then every year at the end of his tax year, if he's got some profit less and wants to save some more tax, he can put it in his pension. But it's just somebody there to pick up the phone and I'll go, right, your tax year ends coming. Do you want to put anything else in your pension before you submit your tax return? Just that little prompt and say, yeah. has anything changed? I rang a client last year who did some life insurance with me. If anything changed? And he's like, well, actually, I'm getting divorced and I have to sell my buy to let property. I need to sort out some income protection because my business has grown. But if I hadn't called him, not, none of that would have got it probably wasn't even on his list because you don't yeah. think about it. And that's what's really good about having an advisor because like it or not, I'll, I'll give you a little prod every year to say, has anything changed? Is our planning still appropriate? Yeah. Do, you need, do we need to look at anything else? Because we so we're I, very busy people. Oh God, yeah. God, yeah. And you know, what? I've got an amazing relationship with my financial advisor. Um, I have. And to the point, like he knows that I've been looking at an apartment and things like that. And like last, it was yesterday, he rang me. He went, hey, how's it going? I went, oh, I've got it. He went, great. A bit like you're saying, he went, great, because I know that's been going on with you. So we need to check that your income protection and everything's still relevant and everything like that. He's like, we need to make sure you might need changing, it might need tweaking a little bit, yeah. all them kind of things. And you, you're you completely right. You don't just get abandoned. Well, by a good financial advisor, you don't just get abandoned. You know, you're, you're there to check in on. It's like you're saying where this person's got, yeah, I've got divorced, I've sold my properties, I've done this. But income protection. Yeah. I scream about income protection from the top of the rooftops honestly i really really do and i think a lot of people think it's a scam slash myth i just think they do because someone said to me they went, oh is that like that ppi scam that went about years ago I'm like, come on come on now if that was called a scam why do, does this still exist <laughs> yeah the talk to clients about income protection say like what's your biggest asset and quite a lot of time people will say it's my house and it's like well how much do you earn it's like, well, I earn like 40 grand a year and how long have you got left to work? Well, I've got like another 30 years to work. So it's like, well, your income is your biggest asset, really. So you're insuring mm -hmm. your house, but you're not protecting your I income. Like I like that. You insure your TV and your car, yeah. but you're not insuring yourself. And if you can't work, your car and your house could potentially, you know, fall away because you can't afford to pay for it. And but yeah. it, it's having that perspective of, of doing it. Yeah. And, and understanding the reasons behind it. I mean, all the all the policies that I do are underwritten on application. So as long as someone's mm. really transparent and honest on application process, then the, the insurance will pay out. I mean, income protection has paid out absolutely loads in COVID. If someone's been off yeah. work during COVID, it's still pay, you know it's paid out. Um, but you have that waiting period. So generally, clients say, "Oh, 
I'll, I'll wait if I'm still ill after three months, then my income protection will kick in. You can have them earlier than that, but this is the important thing about having an emergency fund. So do your budget like you said you did and say, right, well, I need three to six months of whatever those costs are in a separate bank account as an emergency fund. So if I can't work, I'm not reaching for credit cards and, and you know, accumulating debt. You've got that fund there. And even with these snazzy bank accounts, you can get these days and you can put different names on your accounts, like call it your parachute yeah. or a do not touch fund or whatever you want to call it to make sure that it, it does stay there in case you need it. Completely right. So what three things would you say for someone watching this that possibly hadn't looked at their financial advice, hasn't looked at one, maybe considered it and not gone through with it, or maybe even has one, but hasn't really looked at anything for a while? What three things would you say to them? So I'd say check you've got your emergency fund in place, review your budget, yeah. review your protection, always double check your protection, life policies, if a single life policy, they should be written into trust. Um, seeing an advisor, whether it's myself or someone else, don't generally charge for their initial consultations. I don't. So you can effectively get peace of mind for half an hour of your time. It's not actually going to cost you anything but half an hour of your time. And the benefits of that can be absolutely massive. Yeah. Um, so and then if you're looking at buying a property, so if you're looking to, you know, to get a mortgage, keep an eye on your credit report. Uh, look at the check my file um, that covers the three main credit reference agencies. Keep an eye on your credit report. The last thing you want to do is be applying for a mortgage and find out something in your credit report that you didn't know about, you totally forgot about, or you didn't feel was relevant, especially yeah. in the current climate, because the lenders are pretty strict in terms of what, what you know what they take on business wise. So keep an eye on your credit report and save. If you, you know if you want to save, put it in your budget. Don't think if I've got money left at the end of the month, I'll put it in my ISA because you yeah. won't do it. And I've had this conversation with my sister who's saving for a house. You won't do it. So if you say, I want to buy a house in two years' time and I need X amount of money, therefore I need to pay X amount of money into my ISA, you set that up like it's a direct debit, like any other sort of bill, and it goes into your ISA. Thanks. To, do you know what? This is a fact, actually. Thanks to doing that, that's how I've had a deposit on the apartment I've got. Yeah. You know, the deposit and up, up, um, rent up front. And I mean, I'm not just saying it's a blow of smoke. About it. I, I wanted a nice apartment. And that, like you're saying, that was my budget. That was my aim. I knew what I, I know what I wanted. Yeah. So I budgeted for that. And now I've been able to get it because I was budgeting for them savings. Like, yeah. that's an insane thing. But no, you're completely right. Absolutely love it. Uh, the other thing with people is pensions. If you've been through, through employers, which they tend to do these days, not many people stay somewhere for like 16 years like I did. And I have got a very good pension yeah. from it, to be fair. But if you do leave schemes and you get your statements and you stick it in a drawer, you know, get it reviewed by by an advisor. Again, it's it's not likely to cost you anything. See what's in that pension pot. Is it doing anything? Mm -hmm. It might be some some rubbish passive fund that's not doing very much at all. Uh, and and you could be you know you could be making more of that money. But as you keep yeah. sticking in the drawer every time you get it through the post, you know potentially you're losing out. Exactly. Laura, look, thank you so much for coming on the show. We knew it was a bit short today. Um, love to get having you on. Thank you so much. And I'll speak to you soon. All right. Cheers, Callum. Bye. Oh, I love Laura. She's so lovely. But yes, there you go, people. You've been watching The Business Show with Laura Shufflebertham. I love a side name, don't you? Um, and tomorrow we've got a fabulous, fabulous guest. None of you know him. It's called Callum Church. And he is a 20-year-old on a self-development journey that has started a podcast. And he is awesome so make sure you tune in tomorrow at half nine in the morning and remember in the words of banana if you can't be good be careful if you can't be careful don't get caught <laughs>